Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and today we will be going over Markov chains. So there are three main components of a Markov chain. The first is your state space. This is the set of all states in your Markov chain. And you can think of a state as a possible value that your Markov chain can take on. Uh, we use this symbol to denote the set of states. And we're only considering um, finite Markov chains. So the cardinality of this set is going to be a finite number n. The second component is a probability transition matrix. So if the cardinality of our set is n, then this is an n by n matrix. And the entries essentially contain the transition probabilities for our Markov chain. Or in other words, the probability of going from one state to another. And more specifically, p sub ij, or also p um, ij as written here, um, this is the ith row and the jth column of our matrix. And this is the probability of going from state i to state j. And a property of this matrix is that the rows must sum to 1. And finally, um, our third component of a Markov chain is an initial distribution. We use the symbol pi sub 0 to denote this. And this is just a row vector of n elements. And I'll use the notation pi sub 0 of i as written here. This is just the ith element in my uh, row vector. And pi sub 0 of i, um, this is the probability that I start my Markov chain at state i. And because uh, this pi sub 0 uh, is a row vector and it's a probability distribution, the entries in pi sub 0 must sum to 1. So to recap, there are three components of a Markov chain, the state space, the probability transition matrix, and an initial distribution. So now let's look at how the three components of the Markov chain are related. So as I previously mentioned, pi sub 0 is our initial distribution. And it also contains you know, the probabilities of um, where we're going to start our Markov chain. And more generally, pi sub n is going to contain the probabilities that we're at a certain state at time n. So our initial distribution defined it for time 0, which is when we, uh, where we start the Markov chain. And then pi sub n, more generally, is for a certain time step n. So let's try to find um, the relationship between pi sub n and pi sub 0. So 
let's look at pi sub n i. So this is the probability that we're at state i at the nth time step of um, our Markov chain. So let me just draw out, um, you know, just some arbitrary Markov chain. Let's say this is state i right over here. And these arrows just represent um, arbitrary transition probabilities. So, yeah, so something like this. So what this is telling us is that at time n, we are at state i. So how do we get to state i at time n? So let's consider you know, the previous time step, time n minus 1. Where could we have been? Well, if we look at you know, um, at least this Markov chain, you know, we could have been at least in this state right here or this state, right? Because then at time n, we could have transitioned over to state i. But more generally, we could have been anywhere. But what we do know is that at time n, we must have transitioned to state i. Because at each time step, we have to you know, move somewhere, right? So if the, the event that this is um, saying is that at time n, we're at state i. So that means at time n minus 1, we could have been anywhere. But then the next time step, we must have moved from that state to state i. So let me just erase this. So now we know that you know, time n minus 1, uh, we could have been at you know, just some arbitrary state. And we'll call this state uh, j. And then at time n, we must have transitioned from state j to state i. Well, what's the probability that we are at state j at time n minus 1? Well, that's just pi sub n minus 1 of j. That's the definition of our pi row vector. And what's the probability that we tr um, transition from this state j to state i, where we want to be? Well, that's just p j i. And then we have to sum over all the states in our state space because you know previously we could have been in any state. And this is what our pi sub n of i is equal to. So now let's look at the formula um, we previously derived. So pi sub n of i is equal to sum over all the states pi sub n minus 1 of j times p j i. So let's take a look at what this sum is actually doing. So if we have our pi vector, so pi n minus 1, this is the row vector. And we have our p matrix. Uh, P is an n by n matrix. So we're essentially multiplying this first element of the row vector with the first element in the ith column of P. And then we're adding that to you know the product between the second element of this row vector pi and the second element of the ith column of P. And then we keep doing this. 
and then we add up the result, right? So we're essentially taking the dot product between this vector and the ith column of p. Now, if you're familiar with linear algebra, then you'll realize that pi sub n of i is just pi sub n minus 1 times p of i. So what this notation means is I'm multiplying the row vector pi sub n minus 1 with p and then taking the ith element of the resulting vector. So more generally, pi sub n is going to be pi sub n minus 1 times p. So let's try to expand out this recurrence. So this is going to be pi sub n is equal to pi sub n minus 2 times p times p, which is equal to pi sub n minus 3 times p times p times p. And then here, you know, we notice a pattern um, that you basically just keep multiplying by p, and you'll end up, you know, if you keep expanding this recurrence, you'll see that pi sub n is just equal to pi sub 0 times p to the n. So this is essentially how our pi's and our p's, the, the probability transition matrix, are related.